here I am again in my own kitchen. I boiled some potatoes for the gnocchi and you have to have a pound and a quarter of raw potatoes before they're cooked. Then after they're cooked you let them cool down a little and after they're cooled down a little I don't have a ricer but this is the best thing I got. So you put the potatoes in here like that and you do this. This works just like the ricer does except it's you don't squeeze it, you kind of mull it around a little bit. And they come out like that, just like a little rice. Get that down. It's a kind of a go slow, but they sure good when they're done. I used to make those when we were in the farm and my husband didn't like it but the kids did so I didn't make too many then after that anymore but now I started doing it again and we just love them I'll be done here in a minute with this. There, I'm all done with this. And that's how they look like. And you start it out with half a teaspoon of salt, put it in there. Then you beat one egg. I'm not very good at cracking eggs, but that's it. And you start with the little flour. Uh, you measure about, oh, maybe three cups of flour out, and you use part of it in a flowering board semolina, semolina. That way they don't stick so much. But here we go. So put a little flour in it. And slowly start the working in. And if you don't have enough flour, you could uh, get some more. Sometimes uh, potatoes, they have a lot of moisture in it and it takes a little more flour. It's kind of a sticky mess. And you get enough flour in it till the dough it's manageable to work.
and it looks like maybe I have enough. I like to do it in a bowl, then it's less mess that way. You could do it in a table or in a countertop, but this way it's less mess. Now, I'm going to get it out on the board and just put a little flour at the time in it and then knit it a little bit. Better turn on the water for boiling. And I got about oh, a couple inches from the top down of water and a teaspoon of salt in there. And when it's rolling, boiling, then you put your gnocchi in. By the time I get done here, the water will be probably ready. I think that's enough flour in there. I'm going to cut them in in half, and I'll cut them again. Then I'll use semolina to put it on a board. Start rolling them out. I need kind of little room. And you do it small or big, however you want. I like them very small. Just a, a small bite. Then you have a cookie sheet here. If you put it on, spread a little semolina on it so they won't get stick, stick to the paper. And 
start cutting. Just put them on a cookie sheet. And roll some more. get all done and then when they're all done I'll put them in a pot. <laughs> I got one too small. <laughs> Okay, you could, if you have more than for one meal, you could put them on a cookie sheet and freeze them and they last, oh, a month or a month and a half in the freezer if they're packed in a real tight container. But you have to freeze them first before you put them in, otherwise they'll stick all together. And when you bring them out, you could just boil your water and put frozen right in the water to cook. Okay. Well, and it's another way too that you could, if you want to have them a little mark on it to be a little prettier, you could use a fork and just roll them over like this and you have a little mark on it. I'm not very good at it, but that's how you're supposed to do, I guess. You have a little, I don't know if it's this side or not, <laughs> like that. more. Yeah. There. There is the way. Or another way is to make it look like a diamond and you cut them sideways. You go like that. They're a little bigger. I'm not very good at that. Go like that. It's all different. Or you could roll them, make a little balls like this. A lot of people like it like that, or flat. My sister made it a lot like this. There are lots of ways to make it, if you like to play with it. <laughs> and 
and have it more fancy. But I like it the old way, just cut them up and use it. Today I'm going to be making Grandma Sylvia's basic tomato sauce. It can be used for pizza, spaghetti, lasagna. Uh, what we're going to do is add meat to it before we're finished today so we'll be able to use it next when I go see Grandma Sylvia. I'll bring this along and we're going to be using this with her gnocchi which she's going to show us how she makes. She rarely uses a recipe herself. We've pulled these ingredient amounts together by watching her. We're using a very hot pan, some olive oil, we'll be sauteing first the uh, onions, just a small onion. The amount of onion you use really depends on you and how much onion you like. Saute the onions for oh, a minute or two. Add a little garlic, fresh garlic, again one or two cloves. Get that nicely sweated in the pan. of tablespoons of tomato paste and work that around in with the onions and garlic. Put this down just a little. Off for a moment. The tomatoes are a 28 ounce can of whole tomatoes. Now for sake of video and television we'll be using a chopper here to break up the tomatoes because at home you're going to be using your hands but truthfully when you do that those things tend to uh, get a little bit messy and break unevenly. But we'll chop up these tomatoes so that they will blend into the sauce as we make it. That should be fine. Get the fire back on. hands. Put the tomatoes into the sautéed onions and garlic and tomato paste. Get them to blend. Now the spices that Grandma Sylvia uses, generally some basil leaves, Italian seasoning always works, and you can use a mixture of these things and oregano. If the oregano is fresh and still has a lot of flavor as the dried oregano, that's always good. But you can mix that up a little bit. A pinch of salt and pepper. to taste. And oftentimes the tomatoes from the can can be maybe a little more tart. A teaspoon of sugar, maybe half a teaspoon, mellows out the tanginess of the tomatoes. You don't really taste it in the sauce but it does do something for the flavor.
Now if you want it, you could put mushrooms in there. We're not doing that today. Today we're going to be adding ground beef. This happens to be ground venison. Grandma is famous for doing wild game. I'm only going to use half of this because that's all we really need for this particular recipe. And we'll simmer this until we get a nice meat sauce. This is going to take about 20 minutes as it simmers and the flavors marry. Turn it down just a little bit and let it cook for a while. I'll be back. And that's all there is to it. Grandma Sylvia is making her gnocchi right now. I'm going to package this up, take it over there. We'll put the two things together and have a great lunch. Well, here the water is boiling, so I'm going to put the gnocchi in. And here are the gnocchi. So, here we go. Yolk is supposed to cook maybe five to ten minutes and then we'll taste it. Yolk, when they boil, they come to the top of the water when they're done, but sometimes they're not done yet then, so you have to wait. Okay. Oh, I dropped it in the fire. There they're all on in there. And stir it just a little bit. They're looking good. Now we'll have to watch them. I'm gonna check it and see. They taste pretty good. Oh, I look at that. I'm gonna have a, a taster here. Come here, Bab. I want you to taste it. Sauce. Oh, you want some sauce? Oh yeah, you want that sauce that Nadia brought up to put on top of the Gnocchis. She made it, the bolognese sauce, and here it is. And I'll have Beverly taste it and see how they taste if they're done. Ooh, hot, 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 hot. They're hot, but. Wonderful. They need more? To, mm -hmm. What? The cook? No, I think they're done. Oh, okay. One wanted to go back in. When I go back, I didn't want to go. <laughs> he knows what's going to happen. Okay, well, now here it is, the sauce that my daughter Nadia made, the bolognese sauce, and you could use any sauce you want on them, 
and even white sauce if you want. But this, we like it red, so we'll put it on here. I'll start put and this sauce is made with meat. So, it should be good. Here it goes. Here, I'm going to put some Parmesan cheese on top. Not too much, just a little bit. You could put it on as much as you like. Just enough to... And like that. And here it is. Now, where is everybody? I'm hungry. Now I'm going to eat. <laughs> oh, look what we have here. Yeah. Thanks, Mom. It was your recipe that I used. Well, <laughs> thank you. And everything looks good. And thank you for doing this for me. This I love you. Hey, Bev. And you're bad, too. Delicious. I love you, too. Love you, too, Mom. Here's your fork. Let's dig oh, in. Now, as soon as Chuck gets here, we'll be ready to go. If yeah. there's any left. If there's any left. <laughs> hey, Chuck, come on, Chuck, come on. Hey, what do you guys got going on here? Well, Chuck, come here. Here is your plate. Oh, thank and, you. And dig in. Boy, that looks Good. fabulous. She made you lunch. Oh, great. This is excellent. Excellent job. Your wife made the sauce. Now yes. you did that at home and brought it up for the gnocchi that Mom made this yeah, afternoon. One of my favorite dishes from the old country. Well, yeah, so it's good. well known all over Europe and Germany and all over the place. Well, we're ready to dig yes, in. Then. Well, good. I better help myself here then, well, huh? Yes, and see how you really like it. Yeah, that's good. That's good here. This is probably going to be enough for right now. Okay. okay, I'm put a little of this cheese on. It turned out wonderful. There.